Welcome again. This will be part two of our informative videos of how data protection extensions from Dell, e TM Dell EMC are integrated into vCloud Director. In the previous video, we created all of the policies and templates that are deployed into the organization and to the VDCs. Now we're going to log in as if we were the end user, the tenant user, into the vCloud Director portal so we can show how that those data protection policies can be consumed, backups can be run, and restores can be done. So here we're logging into the new HTML5 vCloud Director interface as the vCorp admin for that organization. New to this edition of our data protection extension is the integration of our data protection policies directly into the tenant portal in vCloud Director. As you see in the drop down now, we have our data center, libraries, and administration. We have an additional data protection tab that is enabled by Dell EMC Data Protection Extension that allows the tenant to view their backups, run restores, and change policies according to different vApps and VMs inside of their data centers. We'll go there now, take a look, and see what we have. We have an initial dashboard that gives us kind of a view of what we're doing inside of our VDC. We have ad hoc quotas. These are the ability to run on-demand backups. These can be provisioned and set by the service provider for the end user to be able to run on-demand backups across their vApps and VMs. You can also look at a VDC overview that gives you a quick glance of what your protection policies are, what machines are, are protected by which policies, and then how much capacity you are currently using for the data protection of your VDC. We'll now switch over to the vApps view of looking at the different vApps that are running inside of this data center. We have a couple of vApps with two VMs inside of them. We have some that are ad hoc backup eligible so they can run on demand. That can also be disabled so that they can only run via the policies that were created in the previous videos. Inside of here, we have the options to manage policies. So if I wanted to select different policies for different VMs inside of a vApp, I can do that, or I can select the default, protect the entire vApp by my base policy, which we see here is the vCorp bold base policy, which will give me my seven day retention and backups run once a day at 8 p.m. I wanted to choose this and select VMs individually inside of the vApps. If I don't need to protect certain, uh, certain VMs, I can unselect or select as many as I want, depending on what my protection needs are inside of this vApp. Back inside of our vApps view, we have, we're now currently showing the backup windows. We can also look to a restore option. So any of the backups that are currently run, I can go in and look at the restore options inside of my vApps to restore individual VMs or entire vApps. Like I said before, these based on policy will run according to the schedules that were defined. For example, this one, if I wanted to run an on-demand backup to the entire vApp or individual VMs inside of them, I have the option of clicking and running a backup now. I can select all the VMs or select the individual one. For this demo, we'll just run one VM because this is a VM where we plan on doing maintenance or something else on. So we're gonna run a backup now before we make any changes. You get a notification that the backup has started and is running. You can wait till the completion. You can do whatever maintenance tasks are required. And then you have an option to roll back to that VM if you needed to. Before we do a restore, we'll show the policy. So as a tenant user, I can look and see at these policies we created earlier inside of the data protection extension. We can look and see what those options are, how many VApps we're protecting, and things of that nature inside of here. We can dig in a little deeper, show some of the detail. So we can show how much quota is being used by each policy that we have inside of our VDC. We can look at the schedules so we can validate when they're scheduled to run, how long each one will run, and we can also check our retentions. Down at the bottom, we'll have some more details about what's protected and what's unprotected based on this, this policy that's inside of our VDC. We also have the ability in, these, in the newer versions of vCloud Director to run standalone VMs, which can also be protected via the same policies. So everything can be combined into one, so we have simple data protection across the entire stack. We have the ability to monitor jobs that are running. So we'll see the backup we had just kicked off is still running. Once that's completed, it'll show we can show it in our completed window and look for successful backups. We will see it inside of here so we know we're good to go ahead with our maintenance 
and then we can run our restores if needed. Show the restore options, we'll go back into this VM. We'll select show backups. This will show us all of the backups that have been run against this particular VM, um, how long till they expire, and what size they are. We can go back, say, two days ago, select restore to a new VM. This gives us the ability to leave the existing VM in place and restore these job, restore these VMs so that we can do whatever's required from them. For the new VM restore, there's a couple couple pieces of information you have to supply. You have to give it a, a new name for the VM because we're not overriding the existing one. Give it a description so that we know what it is. We can go ahead and select which backups we're going to restore. In this instance, this backup only backed up one VM of the VM, so we will restore this UBU01. You have the ability to select the default leases that were on the original VM, so we will go ahead and do that at this point. If you were restoring multiple VMs, you could select a start order at this point to bring them up in the order that they are required to run whatever the VM application is providing. Here we only have one, so we will just leave that at the default. You'll have the options to restore the networks of the original VMs, or you can leave them off so that you, you don't you end up with conflicts on the network. For our demo purposes, we'll go ahead and restore the network. It shows our, our network connections. We are going to unselect connected so that I don't end up with those MAC conflicts on my network. So I can restore this VM, log into it locally, and I won't be causing trouble with my production VMs. At that point, we're ready to finish, and we'll see that the restore will be kicked off. We get the, the started, and that will show up back in our vApps in data center. Once the restore is completed, we'll be able to log in to that Ubuntu server and do whatever we needed to do for the restore purposes. I appreciate your time. Hope you found this informative and thank you.